I have a dream that one day children's body composition will no longer be judged by a bathroom scale, but by measuring tape. Aaron and Alex are two 10-year-olds in the same class. They went to the school clinic. They stepped on the scale, the weighing scale. Aaron weighed 35 kg. His height, 1.3 meters. Alex weighed about 43 kg and his height, 1.4. And then the school nurse calculated the body mass index, which is weight divided by height square, and got 21 for both. Oh, she checked the chart. The chart appears to place both Aaron and Alex on the category of being overweight. The question is, is this really true? And is this fair? Mislabeling a child as a result of what a BMI tells you has its consequence. The stigmatization, the mental health effect, the unnecessary intervention, and the waste of scarce health resources. The body mass index is not designed to diagnose obesity individually. It is to tell a story on a population level about what is going on. Children are much more unique because their body composition tells us that they have more muscle than fat. When a child stands on a weighing scale, what are you really measuring? Likely the child's muzzle. So the school nurse has the diagnosis of being overweight for two children. And of course, she begins to counsel the parent. Maybe you have to look at what they are eating. So with BMI measure, we can withdraw from a child nice food. Is that fair? Five years ago, we used data from the UK, the children of the 90s. We conducted an analysis involving nearly 4,000 children from the age of nine, studied until they became 24. So that was 15 year long term observation of these kids. We had repeated measure of their body mass index. And for the first time in the world, we also have an extreme measure of the fat content in their body, as well as their muscle mass. So we related the body mass index of these kids with changes in the blood vessel. And we saw what we really expected, that an increase in BMI was associated with an increase in the stiffness of the blood vessel, which is not good, so to speak. We would naturally have explained that as a problem of obesity. But then we thought about the extreme measure of the fat that we have and that of the muscle, and we reanalyzed again. To our surprise, we didn't find any relationship between the fat mass of these children and the changes in their blood vessel. But we found that there was a relationship between their muscle mass and their blood vessel. Oh, that was physiology. That's normal function. Because as you grow, you increase your muscle. And part of your blood vessel also has smooth muscle. And that's what is causing what looks like a thickness or a stiffness. Without that x-ray, we would not have known that this is just a, a normal function, a physiologic function. We were so happy with the discovery. And then we sent, we wrote a manuscript and sent it to the journals to publish. Oh my, we met a brick wall. The reviewers and the editors 
began to reject the paper. And we started counting. One, two, three rejections until 21. Over a space of two years. Why? Because they said, we have never seen this before. This is a paradigm shift. I didn't learn this in medical school. How is it that your body mass index results can only be explained by muscle mass? Repeat it again. We repeated the analysis six times. The result was the same. Over a space of two years, eventually the paper was published. I began to think, BMI might have misdiagnosed many children. Can we find an alternative? Because the x-ray device is very expensive. It's not available in clinics, only in major hospitals. So what do we need to do? We need to find a BMI alternative. So we went back to our data. And then we began to look at all kinds of measures we use to diagnose obesity in the young population. And we looked at 7,000 children, looked at from the age of 9 to 24 again. And interestingly, an unseen force came out. And that's our tape rule. The measure of the waist circumference divided by the height of the child was the most and the best predictor of an X-ray fat mass. So if I stand on my weighing scale now, it tells me as much as fat, as much as muscle. But if I use this tape rule, it only tells me about fat and not about muscle. An unseen force. I guess we all have it in our bedrooms. We went a step further. And then we began to categorize the values of waist circumference to height ratio and what quantity of, of fat does it tell. So if for a male, if your waist to height ratio is 0 0.5 to 0 0.53, that means you have a high concentration of fat. You've got to start watching what you are eating. When you have above 0 0.53 and above, then you have an excess fat, which is very risky for your health. That rejection brought about this thinking, and then we created these categories that can be used now in the clinics. But not only that, we discovered that the world appears to be interested in what we have found. And suddenly, I began to receive awards. Award from the European Association for the Study of Obesity, which was received in Venice in Italy last year. And the award included 44,000 US dollars. And then, a few months later, a few weeks ago, I got a second award from the US, which I will receive in three weeks' time in Orlando, Florida. 70,000 US dollars, just because of a measuring tape. Think about it. Persistence and resilience in finding a solution to the problem of childhood obesity, in spite of the rejection, has turned tragedy into strategy. Your weighing scale and the body mass index, is this effective? It can only tell you 65% of an exact fat mass measured by an X-ray device. What about your tape rule? Almost 90%. Isn't that wonderful? I was at home in Copio, and I received a call from the UK. And I said, well, who is on the line? Oh, they said, this is BBC. I said, I hope there is no problem. They said, no. They said, we found what you did. We are interested. Can you join us online tonight for a live interview on the BBC World News? I said, what? You are asking if I can join you? It can be an opportunity of a lifetime. I am in. And so 
I began to tell the story of an unseen force, a measuring tape. The body mass index categorization of children has been overweight. We tell us that out of 7,600 UK kids, about 1,431 of them are overweight. So when we have those children here now, and then we stratify them using the measuring tape waist to height ratio category, could you imagine that 64% of them have normal fat? We would have sent these children for intervention, just wasting resources. They are just normal children. Because obesity is not a problem of your body composition. It is a problem of your fat. On the other hand, when we use the waist to height ratio categorization, we get fewer children in the high fat mass category, equivalent of the overweight category of the BMI. Then we now look at these children now and say, let's look at the BMI category of overweight. How many overweight children can we find within the scope of the waist to height ratio category of high fat mass? We could only find 6% normal weight, which implies your tape rule is 10 times better than your bathroom scale. I guess you go home tonight and change what you have been measuring. Globally, irrespective of the continent where you live in, emerging evidence, both in children and in adults, are beginning to show to us that waist circumference to height ratio is significantly better at predicting the risk of liver disease, heart failure and hospitalization, hypertension and high blood pressure, fracture of the bones, kidney damage, as well as type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance. Why then are we still using the body mass index? In January this year, as well as last year, the Lancet Commission, an expert consensus statement was released stating for the first time in the world that obesity and overweight should no longer be diagnosed solely by the body mass index, but should be confirmed by your tape rule. Your waist to height ratio. Think about that. Aaron and Alex, you remember them? The BMI says they are overweight. So now we use our tape rule to examine their waist to height ratio and look at what classification they were going to fall into. Interestingly, the waist to height ratio says. Aaron has normal fat and Alex has excess fat. So we redirect the resources to Alex and leave Aaron alone to continue playing rugby on the field. So Aaron is simply heavy. He's not fat. Thanks to an unseen force. We developed a calculator which you can use as parents and teachers when you find such scenario where the BMI of a child appears to be high and is telling you at least maybe overweight or obese. You can clinically confirm if that weight of the child is due to fat or due to muscle by just assessing the calculator through this QR code. As I conclude, I have a dream that one day the World Health Organization will publish a waist circumference to height ratio charts for children and adolescents as an accurate tool to detect obesity. When that day comes, the rehearsal 
in the global fight against childhood obesity ends and the real battle begins because the right universal weapon has been deployed. Thank you for listening.